I'm about to drop a bombshell on you guys. Now, I know this is gonna sound absolutely crazy, but I'm a gamer. I bet you never knew that. Now, I do play a lot of shit on my channel, as you can probably tell by my Bible Adventures and Jotex Expedia review, especially the Jotex Expedia review. I don't favor every video game in existence, however, there are a select few that I absolutely cannot go without. So considering the fact that 2016 is my 8th year on YouTube, and I'm about to hit 8,000 subscribers on my main channel, here are my top 8 favorite video games ever. Bayonetta. Hell yeah, who doesn't like this game? It's so much fun. It's basically an arcade style beat em up, but brought into the third dimension flawlessly. Now, this is gonna be the only hack and slash beat em up 3D whatever game that I'm gonna put on this list. And I know a lot of people are gonna be really, really surprised that I took this over Hyrule Warriors, especially because my fondness of Zelda, but I just think that Bayonetta does it way better. I love Zelda games, don't get me wrong, but I don't really think that they fit into the hack and slash beat em up genre. That's what Bayonetta's for. Actually, I don't really classify Bayonetta as a hack and slash or a beat em up. I call it a kill fucking everything game, because that's literally what you're doing. All in all, Bayonetta is one of my favorite games ever, which is why it's number 8 on this list. Beautiful. This one's going to be a fairly odd one. I'm sure that none of you really expected me to put Minecraft as one of my top 8 favorite video games of all time, but just the amount of sheer time itself that I've put into it is absolutely horrifying. I love this game, and I've been playing it since 2011. Call me 12 all you want, I still think that this game is absolutely fantastic, and is actually one of the best sandbox games ever made. It's really weird to think that one man could have created what is one of the best selling video games ever. To show you guys an example of how much time I've put into this game, I've tried to create a 1 to 1 scale reproduction of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza from the first 5 nights at Freddy's game. Yeah, that's... that's kinda sad. Not much to say here except for the fact that Minecraft is pretty friggin' awesome. What can be said about the Legend of Zelda series, except for the fact that I friggin' love it? It's Fantastic! The feeling of adventure, the feeling of excitement, the amazing music, the cool graphics, everything about it is absolutely fantastic. And my favorite Zelda game by far would be Wind Waker. It's the one where Link actually conveys emotion aside from stepping on a rusty nail. Yeah, that's... that's actually strangely accurate. I really, really do love all Zelda games though, even the ones where Link doesn't really display any sort of emotion whatsoever. Again, the feeling of adventure and excitement is really what sells these games for me. Even the 2D older ones, like the Oracle games and the first Zelda and Zelda 2, okay, maybe not Zelda 2, but every other Zelda, I love, and it honestly holds a fantastic and very, very proud spot in my video game collection. So, that's why Wind Waker is my number 6 favorite video game ever. You guys know why you're here. It wouldn't be Dan Rock Productions if I didn't include something Sonic related. And as a matter of fact, the Sonic Adventure games are pretty damn tight. I feel that time is right to talk about these games, because there might be a Sonic Adventure 3 coming out this year. Who knows, perhaps it is this 25th anniversary, you blue bastard. But forgetting what everyone else says about the adventure games, forgetting all of the critics, can I just take you back to the early 2000s when we first played these, or late 90s if you played them on the Dreamcast? They were absolutely amazing, and I honestly think that they still hold up. Yeah, the shooting and treasure hunting stages in Adventure 2 aren't that fun, but hey, neither is Planet Wisp in Generations, which many consider to be the best. Whatever anyone says, I will still love these games. They're still fast-paced, high-action fun with a fantastic soundtrack. Seriously, this has one of the best video game soundtracks ever, and I think that you should all give it a listen, or hell, a play. Ah, you could never go wrong with a good game of Thrillville. Basically, it's Roller Coaster Tycoon, but in a third-person point of view, as opposed to a god mode kind of point of view. Because of the new gameplay style, you could run around your park, talk to guests, and do all sorts of stuff that you couldn't before. You could even ride the rides in first-person view, which you could technically do in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, but it looked horrifying. 
So it's nice to see that Throwville finally got it ironed out. And in its sequel, Throwville Off the Rails, is my number four favorite video game ever. It was my first actual Let's Play that I've ever done, aside from my three episodes of Mario 3, but that wasn't really a Let's Play as much as it was me kind of talking into a mic having no idea what the hell I was doing. Throwville Off the Rails sort of was coherent and was fun, and that's why it's my number four favorite video game ever. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that talking smack about this game is punishable by death in several countries. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is absolutely amazing, and it is one of the best video games ever made. The story is fantastic, the characters are hilarious, and it almost makes you want to forgive the horrible fourth game in the franchise. Fucking shit. This is a game series that's been catching on for the last couple years, so I don't really think it needs much explanation. If you're into any courtroom drama, any at all, you will fall in love with this game, and that's all that matters. That's why Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is my number three favorite video game ever. Life is Strange is such a fantastic and unusual and unique game that I don't want to tell you guys anything about it. I'm literally just letting the trailer play out because I don't want to spoil absolutely anything. I want you guys going into it as blind as I was in my first attempt. And yes, it is okay to cry on episode 4. Everyone does. That's really all I can say. I really don't want to talk about this game because I want you guys to experience it all firsthand. I don't want to spoil absolutely anything. The first episode's $5, the season pass is 17 So go download it and have hella fun. nostalgia, oh the memories, oh the level design, oh the music, Super Mario Bros. 3 is the definition of perfect. The only fault I have with this game is that it gets a little bit too hard, a little bit too quick, but at the same time it's too fun to really care about that. I love this game. I really, really love this game. It's fun. It's energetic. The music is nice and bouncy. The enemies are really, really nicely designed. The level design is near flawless. I find it unbelievable that people actually dislike this game. How can you dislike Super Mario Bros. 3? Do you also dislike kittens and ice cream? Super Mario Bros. 3 was the game that pretty much single-handedly shaped me into the gamer I am today. So if it wasn't for Super Mario Bros. 3, you guys wouldn't be seeing any CinemaSins parodies or videos like this or Jotex reviews or anything like that. This game is what you should thank for whenever you see one of my videos that you actually like, which is probably few and far between, but you guys should anyways comment, subscribe, and like. Bye!